Thank you, May, and welcome back, everyone. Today is July 21st, 2024, and right now it is 8 p.m. in Palestine. I'm Andrea Asaf. I'm the Artistic and Executive Director of Art to Action, and we have been live streaming. Uh, our whole team uh, and Sahara and I have been live streaming for 24 hours. Thank you to all who are still watching and still sharing the event on social media. We are near during the end of 24 Hours for Palestine, a moon will rise from darkness, but we're not finished yet. Uh, the Marathon for Palestinian Liberation continues, and we invite you to please stay with us for this important final uh, sharing and closing. Sahar? Yes, the final session in this marathon includes Ashtar Theatre, a non-profit organization that was established in 1991 as the first theatre training organization for youth in Palestine by Edouard Moalem and Iman On, two Palestinian prominent actors who have worked in theatre since 1977. We are very honoured to have Ashtar present Letters to Gaza, Andrea and I will see you after the video for closing remarks. So come join us. And now let's watch. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Sahar. Thank you, Golden Thread Productions, for having Ashtar Theatre presenting the final session of this 24 Hours for Palestine. This closing session of 24 Hours for Palestine will feature members of Ashtar Theatre's community in Ramallah as they come together to read the collection of messages received from the global community in response to Ashtar's campaign, Letters to Gaza. These letters filled with outcry against the genocide in Gaza and the unwavering human spirit that connects us all. Letters to Gaza is a contribution and continuation of Ashtar's Gaza Monologues call that received responses from more than 400 institutions around the globe and groups across 60 countries reaching thousands of audience members. After our call to write letters to Gaza, We've received more than 100 submissions from our international community, Palestinians in Palestine, Palestinians in exile, and people in solidarity from all over the world. We've received many letters, poems, prayers, out of which we want to share a small selection today. Thank you so much to everyone who shared their thoughts and solidarity with us. We will be publishing the many very touching and powerful letters soon. Hello, my name is Emil Sava. I'm the artistic director of Ashtar Theatre in Ramallah. I'll be reading a letter from Ali Abu Yassin from Gaza, titled From Gaza to Shakespeare. Help me, my friend. How can you be present after more than 500 years. You jump before my eyes with every image and every cry. I hear you screaming with the children and sharing their crying with the mothers, dressed in black like Hamlet's father, emerging from under the rubble carrying a child's toy. You appear from above the church bells, ringing them, warning of their destruction standing above a minaret when nothing remains of the mosque except it, trying to help those who fell in a hospital courtyard. You are present everywhere, as if a group of ghosts has split up to force the world to stop the massacres and ethnic cleansing that are happening in Gaza. This is not a war, but something else. When the witches predicted the Burnham would, would move to King Macbeth's palace, it is as if you are predicting that Gaza City will move to the sea after all this destruction and death. There is not a house or building left that is not destroyed along with its residents. 
It is as if you predicted that Gaza would move to the sea. But when the forest moved, the soldiers won. Will it be the destroyed buildings laden with cement and iron and the thousands of bodies still under the rubble of children, women, the elderly, and the fathers, all those pure souls that will inevitably be swept into the sea after the end of the war, as is the custom of all buildings after every war? But the difference this time is that the buildings are mixed with flesh and blood and will be baptized by the sea, as if the price of our freedom, which we struggled for more than 70 years, was this baptism towards freedom. I do not know why the saying of the occupation Prime Minister Rabin comes back to my mind. How I wish I would wake up to, the, to find Gaza swallowed by the sea. Was everything that happened planned? Did you, Shakespeare, know that the price of freedom is the movement of cities and forests, and that still water is stagnant water? Yes. If this is the price of our freedom and dignity, we will pay it with appreciation, respect, and a desire to go towards the sun. Was aviation included in the movement as well? The body of my friend Majid flew 100 meters into the air, and his body ended up on the balcony of an apartment, torn apart by a missile that killed him together with 120 members of his family. The war was not a midsummer night's dream, but rather a terrifying weeping nightmare. The main players of the show were some clowns, including airplanes, tanks, and battleships, throwing lava at children. How could you, William Shakespeare, write us in Romeo and Juliet and warn us of the ugliness of conflict and war between cousins and that everyone will pay the price? The vision has changed, my friend. It has become much more difficult. The sound of rockets makes the heart jump in fear. The smell of gunpowder smoke forcefully penetrates your lungs. Phosphorus bombs which are banned internationally, burn the green and dry land. Seeing your loved ones in pieces, your heart that is torn a thousand times every day as if it were a piece of rubber. Get up, Shakespeare. Help me, my friend. I'm really tired. Resist with your wise pen, full of love, joy, revolution, humanity, hope, and freedom, openly. Maybe we will all become brothers under the blue sky. Ali Abu Yassin, November 5th, 2023. Lettre à Gaza. Gaza, la forte, la forteresse. C'est ton nom, ton nom d'entre les âges. Qui sommes-nous, nous qui t'écrivons, de Françaises qui ne connaissons la Palestine, que par la rencontre faite à gré des voyages, des missions d'études, des enquêtes sur la francophonie palestinienne, deux Françaises qui découvrent que la francophonie palestinienne est un écrit à chaque fois différent, une histoire personnelle, rencontrée plus que vécue, deux Françaises qui hésitons à t'écrire. Que dire Qu'est-ce qui est possible de dire Que pouvons-nous dire Où es-tu, Gaza, la forte Tu es dans ton histoire, tu es dans ton patrimoine, tu es dans ton, es dans ton espace réduit d'accrocher à la mer. Tu es dans ton drame, tu es dans les habitants, tu es dans les exils, tu es dans les images, tu es dans la quête inaccessible, tu es dans les mémoires, tu es là où nous sommes. Nous entends-tu, Gaza, la forte Nous parlons la langue des amis, nous parlons la langue de l'ombre, 
nous parlons la langue secrète, nous parlons bas, nous parlons fort, parlons pour, nous parlons avec, nous parlons ensemble, nous parlons avec le cœur au bord des lèvres, nous parlons au monde. Que fais-tu, Gaza la forte Tu ne dis rien, tu cries, tu hurles, tu pleures, tu as le cœur au bord des lèvres, de lèvres. Tu appelles, tu appelles encore, 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 encore. Et le reste est silence. My name is Nursan Qawasi. Al-Malaika tutawun al-khasarat bitahani sawani. Kulla layla tahlum gazza anaha taghraq. Min ba'id yabdu al-alam kulluhu al-wahm al-khashabiyya ha'ila wa'a'in. Tashu gazza ala tabut basa. Al-ahlam al-maktula. Hal yunkan tahqiqaha? Bata zahira shibha amina kharaja arba'at al-sahaban wista faraga al-damar. بحثوا عن بقايا بيوتهم بعد عشرة دقائق ينهض الموت للصحو برفقة الطائر المسير تقول الأسطورة أن بيوتهم خرجت تبحث عنه آخرهم صار نحو موته المجزر مغمضا عيني لماذا أرسلتمونا مبكرا إلى كل هذا النوم لكن على الأقل ألا يمكن أن تدعونا وحدنا في السجن عالية هذه الأرض؟ لم تكن تريد غزة أكثر من أن تتركوها وصور طفولتها ماذا تبقى من حقائق الزمن؟ لقد صرنا عينة تجريبية في مختبر الضوء البرتقالي لخدمة التجربة هلاك مليون حقبة بشرية في نفس العام تستمر الملائكة بتدوين الخسارات خسارات التجربة تقتلنا حزنا على الوحيدين الرجال الحزينين وإسرائيل تكرر التجربة لعل الغياب يأكل المدينة لكن غزة ستبقى مثل البحر غزة جاءت مع البحر والحرية وترحل مع الماء وفناء السلام كانت تريد الشمس أن تشرق من الغرفة المجاورة لسجنها كانت تريد صباح الخير قالوا أن شبابيك مفتوحة لكن المواطن الصالح غير موجود الحرب وما من أحد أن يوقفك الآن كم من السنوات والأيام ستكشطين من شباب هذه البلاد وأنت تضحكين تفردين نفسك مثل الحب والكره وتشبهين الأبدية غزة صديقاتك يكبرن بسرعة ويهجرنك وأنت تكتبين نصا طويلا عن المخاض بدلا عن كل الأبناء الذين تحلمين بهم أيتها المدينة الزرقاء برغبتك التي تسيل دما حارا صاعدا مثل شمس صغيرة تريد أن تموت حتى تبكي وراء البحر والجبال على مقعد فارخ يجلس الحب وجواز السفر ونشر أخبار العالم تحكي عن كل الأقاصي سواء جرحك الذي لا يلتئم لا بأس أن تدخني بشراها وأن تتلفظي بألفاظ نابية هذا الكون بيت ميت هل يمكن أن الإنسان أن يموت من الجوع بعد عدة أشهر والخيال يقول نعم I'm reading a letter by Natalie Weston. It's titled, It Could Be You, It Could Be Me, Until Palestine is Free. Today I watched someone threw two slices of toast into the bin that were too overdone for them to eat. I thought of the tiny Palestinian boy that had queued for hours to get beans for his family, only to accidentally drop them into the rubble. He spent the next good while carefully picking each precious bean from the ground and dusting off whatever debris he could so he could take it back to his family. We take so much for granted, and we shouldn't. Now everything I do each day makes me think of someone in Palestine who is living this humanitarian nightmare. We have created so many on this earth. Does it make me feel grateful that I can turn on a tap, eat, shelter? Maybe it used to, but now it makes me feel guilty and sad at the injustice and inequality of it all. I feel 
vulnerable because as we continue to see the human rights of those people over there being eroded at a terrifying rate, I am under no illusion that this could be us one day. I wonder if I would have the same strength and resolve that thousands of these people have. I relive scenarios in my head. I question my decisions on a daily basis. I wonder who would stand with me and who would turn away. I feel the cold in my home and think about trying to shelter in my third tent that is under fire. It is incomprehensible, but what I'm choosing to be witness to each day is leaving an undeniable mark on my heart and soul. I feel different now. It is easy to open your eyes and look, but to open your heart and see, that is what so many more of us need to do. It has taken this genocide, this one of many that we've watched in our lifetime, to really open me up to do something. And I am bittersweet, grateful for that. We need to keep solidarity alive for all of us every single day that we get to live. Nathan. My name is David Tanous. I'm an actor at Ashtar Theatre in Ramallah. This is a poem titled I Know Not by Simon Capel. I know not the land of shadows and sorrows, for I have seen in many dreams the land of light, white and green, and the sky bright as the smile of my daughter. She sat next to me in the dawn of life, her mouth filled with words, flowing like water springs when the snow is melting. Is that a bird, said she? I know not, was my answer. For who am I to tell which one is a bird and which one is not? Which one is death and which one is not? Which one is peace and which one is not? I know not the years, the days, the hours of joy and blooming flowers. My daughter smiles in the glimpses of the past. I know not where she rests, where she speaks, where she is. My daughter sings like a bird passing in the sky. I know not the end of pain, the beginning of silence. For one day I will sleep in the green fields of blossoming light. Are you a bird? Will my daughter ask? Perhaps will the answer be. Thank you. My name is Fadi Murad, and I'm from Jerusalem. Uh, I will be reading a letter by Rawani. Uh, 19th of March, 2024. Dearest beloved homes in Gaza, Nothing but rubble is left of you. Your walls have crumbled and succumbed under the brutality of the occupation's relentless bombings. And under the heaviness of your rubble, there lies the inhabitants that once dwelled in your rooms. Your walls that once held those sweet memories of the inhabitants coming together in laughter, in crying, are now reduced to giant piles of broken pieces. How you watched the people gather in your rooms throughout the years, how you observed them get sick and then better, how you generously offered your floor so that the infants could learn to crawl, how the people could find solace in the warmth of your embrace, how you absorbed their sounds of prayers, how you took in their sounds of grief, your ceilings that once trembled along with the high-pitched ululation of the inhabitants celebrating a marriage, the precious firmness of your walls that held proudly onto the photos or the certificates of the inhabitants, how you cherished each coffee stain, each cigarette stain on your firm skin, how you soaked in the sweet, tender whispers of your inhabitants gathering in love and fury, 
Your walls that once held those sweet memories have now crumbled and succumbed under the brutality of bombings sponsored by our governments. And under the heaviness of your rubble, there lies the memories that you once so cherished. I want to let you rest and not awaken your pains, for I can imagine how you not only grief the loss of everything that held you proudly upright, but also how the inhabitants whom you cherished once so deeply are now trapped under the dust and heavy rubble that has become of you. I leave you with a deep silence filled with prayer. May all the broken homes in Palestine be resurrected, and may the rightful and dignified Palestinians return soon. With a raging, revolutionary heart, Rawani. Hello, I'm Nika Dawood, if you're my brother. I'm one of the authors of the monology in 2010. And today I'm with you to read the letter that's written by the author Hashima Afana. So I'm um, so happy to to be with you and uh, reading the letter for Gaza. Before I throw away this for the Samada. By Hashima Afana. Dear Rebitan, it took me a few weeks before I started following you on social media. No one was using the word genocide yet. A part of me was watching the bomb the bombardment would last only a few days, a few weeks at most, and we would all go back to being strangers. The mind makes odd calculation when it is in shock. If I don't follow you on social media, then I'm sure this will end soon. I spent the first few weeks in shock at what I see, what I, what I was seeing on my phone screen. This shock carried on into other part of my life, personal and professional. It couldn't remember what was said in most work meetings. I forget to, I forget to eat. I couldn't sleep more than two hours without walking up for another two, and so on. You kept appearing on my timeline. None of us have any right to ignore you. I started following you the day you posted a video showing the destruction of your work studio. It was early on, and still, no one was using the word genocide. And like myself, you were in color for summer clothes. Then, I can't believe we've changed the season again. And we are supposed to go back to wearing color for summer clothing. How do we find color in the world after taking the color out of Gaza? Speaking of season in winter, I went to buy new boots after I wore out the ones I have, I, I had forever. I went to a shoe store and saw how every winter growing up in Palestine, I'd go shopping for winter clothes and boots with my mother. I started to wonder if that is something you did with your mother. I started to cry and no, no one heard around me had any idea why. I got used to wake up to your saying, hi, my name is Bita, and I'm still alive. Not the kind of use to the normalize the situation, but the kind of where if I didn't see your profile immediately on my grid, when I woke up, I start to ask my friends if they hear from you. It's crazy how you don't know us but we know you. I can't bear to see you cry. And as the day of the genocide increased, the more your English pronunciation remind me of my little sister. So when I hear you cry, I think of my sister and your situation. And I want to burn the world to the ground. One day you posted a video of you having found an orange. I can't remember. 
if this was when you were at the Shiva hospital or not. But you found an, an orange and you showed us how there was a bit of mold on it. With a smile on your face, you peel the orange and eat it. Now, when I look at the oranges, I think of you. When I see mold, I think I am no better than you. I peel the orange and eat it. And so, dirty Hashima. After our call to write letters to Gaza, we've received more than 100 submissions from our international community, Palestinians in Palestine, Palestinians in exile, and people in solidarity from all over the world. We've received many letters, poems, prayers. Thank you so much to everyone who shared their thoughts and solidarity with us. We will be publishing the many very touching and powerful letters soon. As we come to the end of this live stream and this extraordinary 24 hour journey, including that very moving an inspiring video from Ashtar Theater. Um, this 24-hour journey has included performances, discussions, readings, films, information, resources, inspiration, and more. We must all remember that this is not the end of our collective work for liberation. There is so much work to do as cultural leaders and change makers, and it is our hope that this experience has inspired everyone watching to connect, support, get involved, fight for justice, build solidarity, break silences, and stand up for the rights of Palestinian people. We call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire and an end to the genocide, and we call for justice and liberation for a free Palestine. We want to thank everyone who has participated and made this global grassroots movement even event possible. All the partnering theaters, speakers and moderators, poets and performers, contributing artists and activists, virtual stage managers and live stream operators, our staff at Golden Thread Productions and at Art to Action, and of course our partners, HowlRound Theatre Commons, Mina Theatre Makers Alliance, The Freedom Theatre, Ashtar Theatre, Zuchak Theatre Company, Noor Theatre, Dunya Productions, and Donkey Saddle Projects. We will close now with these final reflections, a collective poem, reflecting the last 24 hours. This is what we, Andrea and myself, heard. We need to be able to dream. We have to see that people believe in us so that we can make miracles. Giuliano and Arna are smiling now. We die in a beautiful way. It's not romantic. I want to be an artist. What are you going to play in Hollywood, a terrorist? Time here is like a dagger. We haven't forgotten anything. The pain keeps rolling. The entire world must call for an end to this genocide. It is our only hope. We need the free world to implement justice. We are the majority. We have to say no. I was kidnapped. I do not wish to be a number. There are hundreds of thousands taken. This world is very cruel. All over the world, people are standing up for Palestine, but we are standing in cages. One day, we will break the cages. These taxes go to kill my family. I open my camera and run into the street, document everything. We are writing to reflect on the suffering. Every poem, every photo is a document for history. 20 years from today, our children will be grown and they will see, they will read. What did we do to try to stop the genocide? Honor one name, one story, one place in Gaza. 
All the places are very dear. We don't know the neighborhoods anymore. Everything has been completely destroyed. It's systematic. It's not only that we can't recognize the houses, the houses don't recognize the streets. Who will be left to tell the world? The occupation is one thing. The siege is another. How are children murdered in front of our eyes? It is a stain on our foreheads. Which of our children is next? We have to pay to save our lives. I am in exile now, but the prison is still inside me. We made the blues Arab. Who remembers? I never thought I would sit with someone face to face and hear them say what happened to my people didn't happen. What that must have felt like for my grandmother, watching genocide denial live. From Armenia to Palestine, genocide is a crime. Ukrainian, Vietnamese, Cambodian, Armenian, Afghan, Native American, Sudanese, Cong Congolese, all. We cannot commemorate a genocide that is active. So many are surviving. If we give up or become detached, the genocide is complete. Explosive bias. We hear no echo of care from you, Joe. How could you appease a vengeful army? Soldiers' eyes like teeth, never mind, never mind, they are lost. Whose world is not in ruins now? Whose? There is a moon over Gaza. Even devotion can't bring the morning. The silence of children who once said my name. On the phone, a child says, I believe. On the phone, a child cries for help. On your phone, Hind's voice. I am your daughter. I am your daughter. There is no greater dissonance than the history we are living in. I look out the window and I see carnage in the oaks. Oppressors use words to possess. Lovers use words too. I'm trying to write you a love song. Hello, are you listening? Where are you? Where is home? We remove the rubble stone by stone. This land remains ours. If you are a farmer, put strawberry seeds in your pocket. The moon is no longer the moon. How do you find your shadow when the light is gone? Try qahr or memory. I remember vividly. I am younger than this war. I still have dreams. We are lucky. What does it mean to be lucky when there is so much loss? The luck we have, we pay for with our blood. My heart splits. Born a child with no surviving family. I am sorry, Gaza. I am sorry. Yalla, mama, yalla, wake up. Our dead are more alive than our living. They turned our poets into forensic analysts. Did you see what they did to our faces? You have to survive, only to be killed the next day. Every day is a nightmare. I never knew our people to be hateful. Tap beneath the hate to tap the pain. There is a field. From Ferguson to Palestine, the parallels are so visceral. We are dream defenders. We are not free until we're all free. Zionism and white supremacy are two hands of the same body, with the same goal, to conquer a land and a people, to control the resources of that land. They are inherently violent, planted in the same rotting ground. Pinkwashing is colonial violence. Some people think Jesus was queer, but he was definitely Palestinian. People need to know this. Storytelling is existence, is resistance. Palestinians are heroes, really, for everyone, including the queers. We are in the streets, putting our lives on the line for Palestine. Queer, trans, drag artists, we are showing up and showing out. And did she hit the runway for Palestine? Yes. Yes, she did. All our struggles are connected in space and time. We will take care of each other. I collect all the stones with your blood on them. That could have been me. Do not forget. Do not forget.
I remember everything vividly. I am older than the state of Israel. I had a gun to my head at the age of 12. Our liberation is mutual, interconnected and intertwined. Palestine is a feminist issue. Your silence is not neutral. Constant movement, constant fear. There are no safe places. We don't need a savior. No, we don't need help. We have the right to defend our land. We won't stop, no matter what. We deserve life. With our multitude of imperfections, they can't stop our joy. That's what, what gets them really pissed. They can't stop our joy. When we are being censored, no one admits it's censorship. There's something they don't want to acknowledge, something they don't want to see. What are they hiding? Censorship is for those who need to hide actualities. Does it matter anymore that people are dying? Every place we evacuated to was targeted. I have covered so many wars, but this is the deadliest we have to cover. For those living in safe spaces, the war is a war of narrative. Words are like bullets. The whole international media is a lie. All we have is our stories. We have nearly two million stories, personal experiences of what has really happened inside Gaza. My insides are rebelling. There is a revolution inside of me, spitting blood. You can't see what's happening anymore. You can't see the sky. The world will never be the same again. From birch to cedar and olive trees, we believe in radical peace. It is not complicated. Borders and walls, only in the dream world we traverse them. Genocide was wrong in the 16th century. Genocide was wrong in the 20th century, and genocide is wrong in the 21st century. What kind of God would want that? Solidarity is using our torches to light other torches. We have to see the rebuilding of Gaza. We have to see the return of people to their indigenous land. We have to see the olive trees thrive again. We are on the verge of collapse and revolution. These tears are not proof of our defeat. They are proof of our humanity. Every poem, every photo is a document for history. What did you do to try to stop the genocide? We are not numbers. Honor one name, one story, one place in Gaza. Commit to doing one thing every day for Palestine until Palestine is free. If we don't get this justice today for the Palestinian people, it will not come for you tomorrow. You have to decide what side of history will you stand on. You are not alone. Our liberation is mutual, interconnected, intertwined. We will take care of each other. A moon will rise from this darkness. Resist falling into hopelessness. The land remains ours. These tears are not proof of our defeat. They are proof of our humanity. I am energized by all the creative people, the spirit of resilience and resistance, the children and the innocent people of Gaza, everyone trying to speak the truth. We are the majority. How can hope connect us? We are great warriors. We are opening the mountain. From your hand to mine, I am thankful for the love of our friendship. Thankful for the poets. Thankful for the people in Palestine who are bearing the pain. The pain of our pursuit of collective liberation. I am trying to write you a love song. To save my humanity. To save my soul. It's a call to action for our dignity, for our freedom, for the sustainability of humankind. Remember everything vividly. We won't stop, no matter what. We deserve life. They can't stop our joy. It's free Palestine until Palestine is free. Because liberation is inevitable. Palestine Haram. <laughs>